All right, y'all, we give praise, esteem, and honor to the living Elohim in the name of Yahusha Hamashiach today. Repeat this up in John chapter 5, verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that you have not the love of Allah in you. I come in my Abba's name, you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one from another, and not the honor that comes from Allah in only? Do not think that I will accuse you, the Abba, that is one that accused you, even Moses, in whom you trust. Had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote in me. But if you believe not his writings, how should you believe my word? Birds, you better tighten up, tighten up, boy. I seen you the whole time. Crying about some oranges. Tighten up now. All that flopping and sticking your lip out, that's not what young men do. Get a hold of yourself. Psalm 55. Slow, man. Fifty-five and twelve, if you would. For well, it was not an enemy that reproached me; I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. But it was you, a man my equal, my God, my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of Elohim in company. Let death seize upon them. Let them go down quick into hell, for wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. As for me, I will call upon Elohim, and Yahuwah shall save me. Evening, morning, and at noon, I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He have delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there was many with me. Elohim shall hear and afflict. Them, even he that abide of old, say lie, because they have no changes. Therefore, they fear not Elohim. He have put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He have broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Cast your burden upon you, who, and he shall sustain you. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Shalom, Brother Craig. So, boom, we was in Psalms 82 last night a little bit. But, you know, we already talked about... uh. Y'all remember what that meant, Michael? You remember what that mean? He was a man who was. Do you recall? Oh, that's unfortunate. What about you, sir? Civic, do you recall? Mm, that's unfortunate also. We got to thing to line up with it, man. I was talking to Eve that night. He say, boy, he see a lot of, man, you know, y'all know something that be real funny? But he say he see a lot of brood niggas who be dead broke. And when I say dead broke, he nigga got a job, ain't got no money. But be crying because the woman don't be happy because he ain't got no money. And feel like she should be happy along with it. Big grown rusty niggas too. I'm talking about niggas 30 plus. Am I lying though? Them niggas be on it. These women won't submit. Nigga, you make $36,000 a year, nigga. What the hell is you talking about? How a woman gonna submit to you, man, and she gotta help you pay the bills? I ain't talking about she paid a light bill. I'm talking about, nigga, she, if she don't go half on the rent, y'all can't stay here. You know what I'm talking about? That's a junk that, uh, that's a junk these brew, that's a junk these dudes don't wanna talk about. Man, you can make $40,000 a year and get you a woman. It ain't going to be the woman you want, i tell you that. And she ain't going to respect you like you want like you want her to because she got to go half with you. And if she feel like she got to go half with you, that means she feel like she ain't got to listen to you because she feel like she got a, a half a say and what go on because she pay half the rent. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to tell you. Nigga, these niggas thinking that these women supposed to be like, shoot, you is a man. Nigga, she got to go half on the light bill, the car note, the rent. Come on, man. What type of submission you going to think you're going to get? Boy, you ain't even submitted to yourself. Oh, y'all still ain't found that because, you know, you can look that up. That's what I was waiting on. Oh, I thought that was just inherently implied. Clearly it was not. Same yes, sir. Same office. Oh, wait, and that's why I'm referencing that. A man my equal is the woman in the same office as you. Oh, let's see if the text tells us that. Oh, come over here to First Corinthians chapter 11. Oh, they ain't going to like this. First Corinthians 11. These niggas be tripping, man. 
Y'all know I done told you that. Each was tripping on it last night, though. But I didn't told you that, boy. Well, if you need a woman to pay half your bills, well, you don't need no woman, boy. That means you can't even sustain yourself if you need her half. You should have been already paying bills before you found this woman, man. Not talking about, oh, I need your half to be able to pay. Well, if you if your rent twelve hundred and you need her half to pay the rent, you don't need no woman. Cause boy, you get your child, boy, you're done. You know what I'm talking about? You boy don't be wanting to hear that. I'm still a man, and that you are. But you like I said, man, I put that in the chat for y'all for a reason. Do you know if you if you fat and unattractive as a woman, don't nobody pay attention to you except incompetent and and, and immature men? That's all you're gonna get. You can't be out here unattractive and fat and think you're gonna get a top quality man. That nigga ain't gonna see you. See, that offends women, but this is what offends men. That you could be incompetent and broke and think that the top level women gonna see you. No, she don't see you. Nigga, you incompetent. You ain't got nothing. I don't know why in 2022 that these niggas is offended that a woman is picking you on your ability to take care of her. I don't understand. I thought that was inherently implied from your birth. You know what I'm talking about? That's what they tell she's a gold digger. So she she just supposed to give you her womb and she ain't supposed to get nothing. She ain't just supposed to get nothing, man. She gonna give you some coochie, you ain't gonna get nothing. Oh, that prostitution. No. This is how you know niggas don't know what prostitution is. Prostitution is a whore. See, just because I hope be on OnlyFans or something, that don't make her no prostitute. See, most of y'all ain't never, if she smoke crack, she ain't no prostitute. A prostitute is a professional whore. You understand me? This woman sells her vagina for a living. You know what I'm talking about? She actively and, and regularly markets her sexual services in the marketplace for purchase. You know what I'm talking about? That is prostitution. Mm, high, ain't even high as bitter. This is the rate. I'm here seven days a week selling monkey and mouth. You know what I'm saying? So long, brother. Run. I'm trying to tell you what real. Now, there ain't no prostitute. Every woman wants to be taken care of. And we get to that point. I mentioned it loosely last night. Don't no woman want to work for 30, 40 years. They don't want to do it. Michael, you want to work for 30 years? I know you don't. You be like, yeah, I'm running this business, but you don't want to run it for 30 years. You don't want to do nothing. Don't no woman want to have to get up and grind every day for 30 years. You don't want to do it. Y'all say that, John Good. I'm independent. I'm this, that, and the third till you realize the monotony of grind. And you be like, you know what? I don't want to do this. I need to find me a nigga who's going to finance my life and upgrade me and put me in a different position that I ain't got to get up and go out here every day. If a man is a man, he don't mind going out here every day. He look forward to it. It's the highlight of his day. The highlight of his day is not spending time with his woman. The highlight of his day ain't even spending time with a churn. It'd be like this here, boy. I got something I'm building that I'm trying to, to, to manifest, and that, that's what motivates him to get out the bed. If y'all believe a nigga motivated to get out the bed because of you, he did lying to you to make you feel better about yourself. I'm just here to tell you that, though. You ain't got to believe it, but a nigga lying to you. Oh, you motivate me, baby. That nigga lying. He just know that's what you want to hear. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to tell you that lie. I ain't motivated by you to get that grind. It's, it's when niggas do stuff, boy, it be time. Niggas do be in the bed like, boy, I don't want to go nowhere. But the, the love of what it is that they doing is what get him out the bed. Not I got to take care of my wife. Not I got to take care of my kids. Because eventually you'll be like, F them kids and F her too. And you won't get out the bed. And I'm telling you, it's men who do that, John. Who sit there and lay in the bed because they really like, I'm doing this for these people and I don't even like this woman. I ain't going. You know what I'm saying? It, it just reality, man. And I'm telling you, because see, y'all, you know, they market romantic, fantasy, fairy tale type love to y'all, and y'all live in that reality that that's what love should be. But men don't live like that. And the men who you find like that, they kill women. Do you know what I'm talking about? The dudes who get caught up in that type of fantasy type of love, those are dudes who kill women. Them the dudes who be at your window talking about who that nigga is in the house with you. That's the nigga when you leave him, he beefing with the new nigga you messing with. That's them. You don't want them niggas. You want a man who's motivated by his own success, and then you get to come in and benefit from said success if you deserve it by showing yourself worthy to be in his presence. 
You know what I'm saying? Then you get the benefit off of that because you have proven yourself by whatever litmus test he is taking you through that you should be able to benefit from what it is that I do. And that's what the Lord has done for you. That's why he tells you, remember that, what it say, Jeremiah 17 and 9? He said he tried the hearts and the reins, right? And what he said to give a man according to his what? His work. So that means you show yourself that you are worthy enough to receive the benefits of the labor that he has manifested and created. You should remember that because what did he tell you in Ezekiel 36? I don't do this for whose sake? Your sake. He said he do his great name's sake. So he was doing that for him. Him saving you was not necessarily for you. That was for him to re-sanctify his name that you profaned and defiled. And then you, you get to benefit once he's trying your reins from the things that he has acquired from his labor. And you get to benefit off of him. That's how that works. That's how he come in and make your life easier. But you would have to prove yourself as somebody worthy enough for him to lighten your load. You understand? See, what we was reading Isaiah 4, what I was last week or the week before. And, 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 and they came and said, we got our own bread and our own apparel. And not one time did he say, yeah, I'll take that. No, no. Because at this point, if you got your own bread and own apparel, you're going to feel like you're going to have you get to have a say. You know what I'm saying? No, you don't get to have, okay, you want to be called by my name? You want me to take away this dishonor? I'm going to give you my own bread and I'm going to give you my own apparel because then you're going to get down with what it is that I got going on. I'm not getting down with what you got going on because I don't care what you got going on. You know what I'm saying? What you got going on don't benefit me, so why would I care? See, I know it's different because a lot of women, you talk, you want to, they tell you invest in women, invest in what, what am I investing in? What am I getting back in return? To see her be able to benefit and have her own stuff and then eventually dip. Because now I don't need you. You finance me to go get it because now I feel like I'm better than you. That's also another matter that most men don't like to deal with. A woman does not want to be with a man that she feels like she is superior to. If she feel like she's smarter than you, if she feel like she got more money than you, if she feel like she got more status than you, she's not going to respect you in the fashion that you, you feel like you should be respected in. Now, just imagine, right? We can't even imagine. Just pay attention to the text. When the Lord came, where was he from? And what did they, what did they say about Nazareth? Can any good thing come from Nazareth? What was his occupation? You think carpenters were at the top of the social structure? You know what I'm saying? So when they looked at, remember, because remember what it said in Isaiah 53? I'm just trying to set the stage of the parallel. That's all I'm trying to do. In Isaiah 53, what did they say they didn't find in him that they found desirable? No comeliness. They didn't see any honor and esteem to the point where they looked at him and said, he's greater than us. So I will value, honor, and respect him. They felt like he was beneath them. Is that not how they interacted and dealt with him? They looked at him as if he was beneath. This ain't no king. Hold on, yeah. I'm finna get it. I got a little reconnect, a little unstable. Get a second. Y'all were thinking too, like, in the parable, like, why they felt like... Shalom, Sharon. Why they felt like them having their bread and their own stuff matter. Oh, cause they were just looking at, I got the, I, they, they, and they mind, and this is just all speculation. I'm bringing something. Right. See, I'm going to tell you, I ain't never thought about it. I, I see that's a new thing in 2022. Bunch of dudes asking women what they bring to the table. I don't give a damn what you bring, what I tell you to bring. This is what I need at my table. Can you supply? I don't care. Only niggas who ain't got no money and nothing going on going to look a woman in the face and ask. Her. That's it. That's the only thing you need to be concerned with. Can you meet these? My, in the construct? What if he would walk around and people talking about, so what you bring to the table, Peter? No, nah, he told Peter, this is what you finna do right here, Peter. This is what you bring into my table. Ain't that what he told him? Did he come up to Matthew? Matthew, what you bring to the table, Matthew? Do you know what I'm saying? Just imagine the Lord just walking around to everybody. What you bring to the table? You bring something to the table? Ain't no masculine man asking nobody that. Because he didn't already took the time to build something that he knows that he is everything. That man told you he the house. Guess what? We, we could actually go into that a whole nother direction. Because you know it's a table in the house, right? That you got set what on? That shoe bread. So we could come in and Lord say, he can tell you I'm the table. Nigga, everything on the table is on me. I support all of that. So I don't care what you bring. 
what you bring is what I need in order to fulfill my will. You know what I'm talking about? And I'm telling you that as a mindset reshift of how you look at him, just using the natural stuff. Because these niggas out here gay. I'm going to tell you that right now. Most of these niggas out here walk around, man, these niggas not men. And it ain't their fault because ain't nobody told them. It ain't their fault. You know what I'm talking about? I know one thing for certain. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want my daughter to be married to none of these niggas. You got dudes who be around here be like, yeah, man, I made 40,000. I'm an average man. Your daughter, an average woman. She very well may be an average looking woman, but I don't mean I'm finna give her to a broke nigga. Yeah, go ahead, babe, and struggle all your life. I ain't give a damn about you. I just spent damn near 20 years taking care of you to give you to a nigga who can't even get you a four for four. You know what I'm talking about? He want to rub on your booty. He can't even get you a four for four. And I say, baby, go ahead and marry him, you know, because he average man deserve love too. No, nah, you broke bastard. Go get you some money, then get you some skills, get you a trade, do something. Nick, I wouldn't care if my daughter looked like the backside of a cow's butt. I'm not sitting around here with you. Just <laughs> 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 being dead honest with you. This wrong won't go to you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> this wrong won't go to you, huh? He's sending my daughter around that on purpose. It's different if she's stupid and she just messing with different men and she's struggling. I'm going to give my daughter to a dude and know she going to be poor on purpose? No, nah, man. Absolutely not. You know what I'm saying? Them niggas can keep that red pill in that junk where they at. My daughter ain't going to be with your broke behind, nigga. You better go get your, go be a plumber, nigga. Bump yourself up about 65, man, with a with an opportunity to get you some more bread. You can't be no grown man and say I'm happy with forty thousand dollars a year for the rest of my life. What you think you gonna get, boy? You finna you ain't gonna get Big Shirley, nigga. You gonna get Big Bertha, nigga. You gonna get a chick named Matilda, nigga. That's what you gonna get. First Corinthians eleven one, man. Man, ain't no beautiful woman messing with no broke man, man. Not on purpose. Not on purpose. She didn't know. Not on purpose. Now, I praise you, brother, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances I delivered to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Mashiach and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Mashiach is Elohim. So get what? If you the head, go and half with her for what? What we splitting for? You know, that's what a lot of these dudes like to tell you. It take two incomes to survive. That means if it take two incomes, you don't need no woman. There it is. You don't need no woman. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 I, and I know it's hard out here. I know it's real out here. But if a man thought process is, I just want me a woman at all costs, and I ain't did ABC, come on, man, you're going to have to have turn with this woman, man. And eventually that woman going to be looking at you and be like, why hasn't our life station increased? And then it's going to start to be some pressure. Man, y'all know the mass majority, the number one reason why most divorces happen in this country? Michael, what the most reason most people divorce in this country for? Money. You know what I'm saying? Dudes talk all that gangster stuff till the light's off. Then she like this here. What you been doing, Charles? Get off my back, woman. You know it's been a struggle. She don't want to hear that. She don't want to hear that. <laughs> she don't want to hear that. Where did the money go? Unless she was spending up all your money. Then you supposed to take your nice boot, shine it up real nice, turn it sideways, stick it right up her butthole. You know what I'm talking about? Kick her right on out of the door. Kick her right on out of the door. See, come on back, man. Let's get back to this song 55, man. With this evening and morning. Well, let's have, let me ask y'all this here, because that's the part we're talking about. Let me swing over here to Daniel, man. Daniel 6 and 10. You can get an example of that going down. Now, I mean, fun with all jokes aside, though, man. As a man, you just can't be happy with it. I'm going to be average. I'm cool with that. And then wonder why the women don't want you. Shoot, if I was a woman, I wouldn't want you neither. Daniel 6 and 7. Nigga be around here talking about, so are we going to be able to go out to dinner this month? Yeah. But you know where we're going. Again. Not on the town, but them niggas is Burger King, nigga. Walk on the board. Now, I'm being funny. 
But all jokes aside, like it's too many dudes that come with being poor. Cause when you talk about inflation, a hundred bands ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? If you talk about this regular taxation, about thirty thousand coming out of that hundred bands, especially if you was working for somebody and they were paying you a paycheck. So you might be at seventy thousand. Let's just say at, any, at at just for a flat rate. Let's just say wherever you were staying at, you rent a van. So that's another twelve thousand come up out of that. So now you're down to fifty eight thousand. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, don't have a car payment. Let's just say for sake of this conversation, your car payment is four hundred dollars. Now you're down another forty eight hundred. So now you're at about fifty three, fifty three five or fifty fifty two two. So now about half that's gone. You know what I'm saying? We ain't mentioned no food, no none of that. Nigga, that junk gone. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, hundred thousand dollars ain't nothing. So imagine if you got forty thousand and your rent is a thousand. You down to twenty eight thousand. You know what I'm talking about? Off top, you down to twenty eight thousand. For you go to talking about lights, food, transportation. Well, by the time all that get whittled down, boy, you on the twenty thousand dollars, man. You can't put nothing to the side. Boy, if something go wrong on the car, boy, you walk, you on the bus or your Uber. A lot of niggas thank the Lord for Uber, boy, because a lot of niggas couldn't get around before stuff like that. Especially in this city, talking about catching a bus. And boy, I done drove Uber. That junk expensive for them people who get in them rides, boy. To be doing that junk every day. You niggas know, expensive. You know what I'm saying? That junk eat up your money quick. I'm talking about your money be gone quick. Like straight up now, bro. Me be throwing, and, and, and that's what people look at. You know what I'm saying? And see, young women, they don't care nothing about that stuff. But the older woman gets, she go to hearing how much money you make, she calculating your ability to pay this, that, then, the third. And she said, that's a hard pass. That nigga can't take care of himself. How you going to take care of me? The contrary to popular belief of getting a woman is a bill. It is a burden. Because now you're responsible for another human life. That's why you're supposed to get something up out of her. For taking on that burden. And that's why the Lord won't sudden up at you. You know what I'm talking about? You're gonna do something for me. You imagine that? That's a see, most men they, they say it, but that's a bill. Taking on I have to pay for you. I have to pay for you. That's not not that's just the, the construct. What is the what is the curse that, that I feel? You gotta work by the sweat of your brow. What did this man Paul write to Timothy and tell him about a man that don't do for his, for his own, especially they have his own household? What did he say you were? And what have you done? You have denied Elohim himself. You know what I'm talking about? When he say denied the faith, that's just like, oh, I'm denying the book. No, you're saying Yahuwah doesn't exist. So why, so why is that a denial of Yahuwah? Because when you go in this book and you see yourself coming up out of Egypt, Everything that a man is supposed to do for his family, that man did it. You know what I'm saying? He had somewhere for that woman to stay. He had clothes for that woman back. He had food for her stomach. You know what I'm talking about? The things that she re, that she required, he provided that for that. And in turn, that man entered into a covenant with this woman and demanded this level of service in return for what I have to give. You know what I'm talking about? Because I'm taking on a burden by making you my people. I'm going to uh, obliterate and slaughter a multitude of people and give you what is theirs. Anything that you desire, matter of fact, not only anything that you require, anything that you desire that's according to my will, this man say, I'm going to give it to you. But you're going to have to follow my, you're going to have to follow my rules. You're going to have to give me some service to get some service from me. That's an even swap, no swindle, my personal opinion. A lot of people don't look at it that way when dealing. I'm talking about us dealing with you. Who that's an even swap, no swindle. Because he got a house for you now. Where the house he got for you now, sir? He got he got his kingdom. He got New Jerusalem. He got somewhere for you to dwell. He gave you a garment. He gave you clothes to wear. You know what clothes them is, sir? Huh? Huh? Help him out because he, he a little off. Little, little Ruach Hakadosh, he gave you some clothes to put on. He gave him some food to eat, sir. Could you tell him what the food was he gave you to eat? He gave you his flesh, his actual body, a living word for you to eat. And what does he ask for in return? Submissive obedience. I'll give you all of that, but this is what you're going to have to give me in order for me to take care of you. That's an even swap, no swindle. 
You know what I'm saying? On a natural level, it's supposed to work the same way. Um, you're not supposed to live your life catering to no woman. She's supposed to live to serve you. You reward her for her service. That's what that Proverbs 31 woman was spoken about. Her husband praising her in the gates and everybody talking about how great she is. She was fulfilling his will. If we was to go back to ancient Yasharal and we'd be walking around here talking about, oh, I do all this here for my wife to mingle, look you dead in your face and say, what does she do for you? Oh, she'll do that for me. I got to do everything for her. And they're going to laugh at you. Because that's not our culture. That's not that's not how they were taught. That's not how men were raised. They would make focus on, you got to go out here, you got to do A, B, C, D, and your wife and your children serve your will, whatever your will is. Because your kid's part of that too. Ain't no, oh, you got to let him be a child. And don't let him be no child. You think Yahoo Shah was walking around here not learning carpentry till he was 17, 18 years old? Absolutely not. That man was out there with his daddy. The minute he could pick up a hammer. The minute, you know they didn't go to school, right? You went with your daddy. Whatever your daddy did, that's what you did. And your daughter, guess what your daughter was? You had some plants, some crops in the, at the house. Guess what she was doing? Out there with your mama, picking them crops. Making sure all that stuff get taken care of and worked on. And you come on back to the house. Not sitting around here joking and skinning and grinning and clapping hands. That's not how them people live. That's how we live over here. That's why you have a fragmented community, so to speak. Of I want what I want. I want what I want. She want what she want. He want what he want. Don't nobody give a damn what the daddy want. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what you want. It's a matter what he wants. If he the head, that means everybody's supposed to be concerned with what he wants. Oh, now nah, I know who that is. Six and seven. And I'm just telling you that to get you in the mind frame of dealing with Yahuwah. Yahuwah don't care about what you want if it goes above what he wants. Now, what you want is in line with what he wants. He going to give it to you. And he's going to give it to you with no hesitation. And that's what he told you. He's going to give it to you with no hesitation. But it needs to be in line with what he wants. If you are a dedicated servant to Yahuwah, the man told you he will not withhold any good thing from you. Key word on good, that which is pleasant and agreeable. Anything that is good, that man will give it to you. Remember what he said? He said, I call you my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. You know what I'm talking about? If you go in the direction that I tell you to go, I'll give you whatever you want. It's not a problem. It will delight him to do it because you're delighted to do it. That's how you who it feels. He want to give it to you. What did he? The Lord told us this in Luke, I think is mentioned. He said, it's your, it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It's, it pleases him. He wants to give you rulership. That's why we were talking about rulership last night. He wants to give you rulership. He wants his daughters to be in a position where their men can rule and they don't need to be concerned with any type of burdens. That's how you who will roll. I don't, I don't want my women. He doesn't want his daughters walking about how I'm going to pay the rent, how the light bill going to get paid, how food. He doesn't, a woman doesn't need to be concerned with those things because that's added stress that she doesn't need. That's why a lot of dudes don't understand why can't I get femininity out this woman because she's trying to survive. You're not going to get a soft, feminine, quiet woman and she focus on where am I going to sleep tomorrow? How am I going to eat tomorrow? Most of these dudes don't understand that. How is she going to focus and be a woman in that type of environment? She can't. You know what I'm talking about? Especially if they got offspring. Because then a woman's first instinct is going to be, okay, these churn. What are we going to do for these churn? And then you expecting her to be soft and nice with you. All she thinking about is, nigga, we going to be homeless tomorrow. Six and seven, Daniel. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, the princes, the counselors, the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any Elohim or man for 30 days, save you, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Let me get this word for petition. Let me get this word for petition. Because I don't want y'all to get it twisted. Because most of you ladies know in here, if you do the things that your husband desires for you to do and you ask something of him, that he does not withhold that from you. You know, you got to be a real lobster for your wife to do the things that you desire for her to do. And then you don't reward her for it. You got to be a real sucker nigga for that. 
You know what I'm saying? That junk ain't cool. Yahuwah definitely don't operate like that. You know what I'm saying? If Even if your children, if your children serve you in the fashion you want them to, and he asked them for a candy bar, I say, son, now you know, you don't, we don't give you candy like that whenever. But boy, one day out of the week, boy, you've been doing a good job, boy. Go on, get you that snicker bar. You like baby Ruth? What you like? You hit him off. Indulge yourself. It ain't wrong with it. It ain't going to kill you. Now, I ain't going to get to you every day, but hey, man, you've been doing a good job, son. You deserve that. You earned it. You know what I'm talking about? It shouldn't that that shouldn't be no problem. You know, niggas feel like you shouldn't reward doing for doing good work. Or even let somebody know they're doing good work. That junk ain't cool. You know that on the job, man. You you don't work the job and the people come in there and let you know they appreciate what you're doing and they see the level of output you're doing. That encourages you to say, you know what, I can stick around here and work for a while. I mean, you're doing some good work. I mean, like, man, them niggas ain't saying nothing. Man, I'm finna quit. And it could be paying you good too. But you feel like, man, these niggas don't give a damn about me. It'd be simple stuff, man. It helps for morale. Who said what we burst that petition in here? Oh, I skipped over. I'm in sad. Let's see what we got for petition. So for petition, we have Ba'u. You have Ba'ain and U. And you can give me what you got. Ba'ain and U. It means petition request, prayer. Obviously, I mean clearly, but I just had to share the whole litany of information. Ba'ain and U. Because we're talking about in another aspect of that persecution aspect of what was in Psalm 55, and it was about him crying out or praying to Yahuwah. So we have Ba, Ain, and U. He'll get it, but you ain't did nothing wrong. Just wait for him to come back. Go this way from the grandma. Thank you. Oh, y'all ain't got nothing for buy Aina U. Michael, you look perplexed. You okay? You sure? Okay. You positive. Renee, what you doing? Oh, y'all ain't got nothing for me yet? Oh, Saran got son to know how to pair yourself to the sun. Very well, good, sir. The experience of being paired to the sun, it's, it's all the same. They all work, get, work well together. I already referenced the verse re already, already. But I guess we can go back and look at the John 15 uh, to experience the nail of the sun. Very well, good, sir. That's even, that's even, that's a tad bit different. Same but different. We'll use both avenues. One we already talked about the other day in Luke 14, so we won't go there. But we'll look at it in 1 Peter chapter 4 real quick on one element. Now, yesterday, right, last night, right, I should say, we were talking about being a ruler, right? According to this text, and, and you're going to, in, in, in a New Testament aspect, is where you're going to see it the, the more so expressed. What does one need to do in order to be prepared to rule? What are some of the things that they need? As a matter of fact, yesterday, like, Brandon put the verse in there like not being a novice. And I asked him, like, you know what that means? Because, like, when you're dealing with somebody who want to be a bishop, he can't be no rookie. You know what I'm saying? He can't be he can't be new to actually knowing the word. He would actually have to walk in it for a while, been instructed in it for a while to be able to effectively administer it to another person. This is go go to Sun. We were listening to Sun Man. One of the brothers said this, which is accurate, and everybody should know this: is that you can't be an effective leader until you have learned how to follow. 
You're not going to be able to lead anyone if you've never been led by someone who you seem to be greater than you. Because in turn, you're going to jump up and you're going to be ineffective in your leadership because you're going to be a novice. You're not going to know what you're doing. And usually you're in your rule and, and lead by your feelings. Very well, Ron said. He talking about humble yourselves under the mighty hand of Elohim, because that can roll with exactly what we're going to look at in Galatians chapter four, I believe. Yeah, but I'm going to make my way back to it. Hey, Joe, 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 don't come back here with that. Come on, Joe, let's fight. Joe, you don't want to fight? Oh, I thought you wanted to fight, Joe. What's up, Joe? Little Joe, you ain't gonna show me no love, Joe. Oh, you, you capped out, Joe. You capped out, Joe. Galatians four and one. Now I say that the heir, as long as he a child, differ nothing from a nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. So let's pause. Remember what he told you in Matthew twenty that he did not come to serve to be served, but to serve. So this was the aspect of his preparation in becoming a ruler is that he had to become a servant. I think we read that last night also in Philippians chapter two, when it said, let this mind be in you the same mind that be in Yahusha HaMashiach, who humbled himself and became a servant, humbled himself even unto death. See, the first aspect of a man being prepared to be, able, even when you look at David, David is a is a crystal, crystal clear and crisp example of, of what we're talking about right now. When we read last night in Samuel, what was David's occupation at that time? He was a shepherd boy and he was a young boy. And then he went and slayed uh what his name is Goliath. And after he saved Goliath, what happened? What, what happened to David after that? He was put in Saul's house to be a servant to the king. And he served Saul until Saul died. You understand? Before he ruled and became king, because that is your example of even though he because because the Lord had already told him he was gonna be king. And though he was heir of all things at that particular moment, he still was under tutors and governors and was a servant until it was time for him to rule. See, in order for us to be prepared to rule, because we read it last night, you got to be under the tutor and governorship of Yahusha until it's time for you to rule. How are you going to be able to get into a kingdom and rule and you ain't been following and serving this man? You know what I'm saying? You even get your preparation to even know how to rule by being able to rule over your household, which is why he said a man can't be a bishop if he ain't got no rule over his own household. If you can't even govern and dictate your wife and your turn, how would you be able to rule and govern anybody else? Your woman talking to you any kind of way, your son say, F you daddy and run off. And you like this, here, ah, oh, you know. Now I got to slap him. You don't want to check him. I'm going to check that nigga, all right? I'm going to kick him dead in his teeth. He ain't going to have no teeth in his mouth. Ain't that right, Grandma? Mm -hmm. You got some teeth in your mouth? Oh, you just want to show him, huh? You ready to lose him? Oh, you show? Oh, you're not show? You want a GTS? Mm, you smart. You know what GTS mean? What it mean? So you don't know what it means. It means go to sleep. You want to go to sleep? Oh. Galatians 4 and 1. Now I say that an heir, as long as he is a child, differ nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, Elohim sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Therefore, and because you are a son, Elohim sent forth his ruach of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba. Wherefore, you are no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of Elohim through Mashiach. Because guess what? If you were son of Mashiach, just say on the natural side, who would you be a son of? You know who you'd be a son of? Yeah, you. If you are born of Mashiach on the natural side, who will you be a son of? The son of who? The king is a is a title. That's not a that's not a person. 
I said on the natural side of David. That means you would be a bloodline of David to be able to say that you would be a son of a king. See, we needed David that for that one there for, for completion. Because the son of a king would be acceptable, but then we'd have to be like, which king? Because there were a lot of kings. But the main king would be David. I'm just saying on the natural side, even though naturally you, whatever seed you is, if you, but if you were born of Mashiach, then you would be of him. And if you would be of him, then of course you would then be of the household of David because you cannot be an heir to a throne unless you are of the household of David. That's the only person who could sit on a throne in Yasharal. So if you're born of Yahusha, then you would be of David, so to speak, to be able to reign, to be on the throne and be a king. Let's come back to 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1. Then we'll go back to Daniel chapter 6. You all right, cuz? You good? Yeah. Oh, you cool? Oh, you just hanging out? Huh? You cool? I said, you, you just hanging out? Or you just watching your brother? Or you doing both? You guess. Oh, you say yes. What you got put out? No. You got put out? No. I hear you. You're not saying it. your word. Oh, are you crying, Joey? Oh, what you back that line for? You back that line? Who does? You said who? So you the owl. It's you. First Peter 4 and 1. Yes, Jessica, I seen you said, David, and that is correct. For as much then as Mashiach have suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. For he that suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he should no longer live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of Elohim. We really there only to focus on that last part. And that is that you live your life to the will of Elohim. And who was Mashiach's head? It's Elohim. So his life was dedicated to the will of the person who was over him. And then as men, our life is supposed to be dedicated to the man who's over us, which is Yahusha. And then the woman's life is supposed to be dedicated to the man who's over her, which is her husband. And if his head is Mashiach, then by proxy, Mashiach and the father is going to be her head because that's who he's following. Now, see, that would be the only caveat if, say, you're dealing with a young man and he ain't got no money, but he has an ardent fear of Yahuwah. You could give your daughter to a man like that. Because you know that you have a man. If a man is a is a, a fervent rever, uh, uh, reverencing in Yahuwah, that's a man worthy enough to give your daughter to, even if he doesn't have a large amount of resources. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't, the, uh, uh, a literally Elohim fearing man is of greater price than a man who don't fear Elohim and has resources. Because that's a man who's rich in faith. He has greater resources than a man who has tangible resources. Now, you, we, we, we know what I'm saying. It's not no laughing matter. Like, didn't mean that you don't want to give your daughter to a man who doesn't have the ability to produce. But you, but if you had the choice of a man who could produce but don't fear Yahuwah and a man who is, is average but fear Yahuwah, you'll give your daughter to the man that fear Yahuwah if you actually fear Yahuwah. Because you know that this man is going to take your your daughter and lead her in the in the way of admonition of the Lord the same as you did. And that's of greater importance than resources. But you would also have a conversation with him. It's like, son, well, what you trying to do with your life? You know what I'm talking about? Because working at Winn-Dixie Warehouse for 40 years ain't going to cut it, son. You're going to have churn and it's going to, and I say that because that it's going to stress it. And when men get stressed, they usually put bullets in their head or they do alcohol or drug problems. You know what I'm saying? When they got too much pressure on their head because they ain't, they ain't plotted and planned out what they want to do with their life to make their life easier when other people begin to get added unto it. You know what I'm saying? And that's just some mention of this stuff because most of y'all might talk to younger men. That's stuff you need to tell younger men. Well, get your stuff ironed out. If possible, what well, don't get you no wife and no kids until you're financially stable enough to provide for them. 
because you might put yourself in a stressful position and, and, and it can have a deleterious effect on your mental state. There's a reason why a lot of young men, a lot of men, period, kill themselves in this country at a far higher rate than women do. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of men don't come into it. Most of us ain't even mentally or emotionally or spiritually prepared to be talking about taking on no wife and no children at no young age. You know what I'm saying? It's a very difficult endeavor. It's not light. You got brutals online. They talk about it like it's a light matter, do they not? It's not a light matter. And anybody who's been married for a significant amount of time raising children can tell you this. It's not a negative thing. If, if it's if it's done correctly, it's a, it's a beautiful endeavor. You know what I'm saying? If both people are are, are what what is what what they need as far as their particular position is, is being met, and there's the love of Elohim and the love for one another in the house. I mean, that's a beautiful thing. But if you are a, a young 21, 22, 23 year old man, and now you begin to now you got to take care of this woman. Now you got kids coming in and you got bills, and you ain't really set set your life up and map your stuff out. That's gonna stress you out. That's why dudes put bullets in their head. I don't know why this is your city, Michael. That nigga bold to jump off a skyscraper, a high rise. Man, that thing they say, baby, jump, jump from the 30th floor. But I would listen to her talk. She was stressed out. She went to become a lawyer and all the type of stuff. She got stressed out. Couldn't deal with it. Man, look at man. Life will put your brain in a vice grip. Boy, you understand me? What was that? It could have been. Real, boy. Life put your mind in a real live vice grip. Squeeze it. You know what I'm talking about? Come back to Daniel tap to see. We get John 15 in a moment. That's what it was we was coming over there for. That's why we also read that first Peter 4 and 1 to experience the nailing of the sun, to know or to put yourself to the sun. You would have to know that by letting his mind be in you and, and suffering in the flesh. That's the only way you're gonna know him. Because what did he tell you you was gonna have to do? follow him right that was the only way that you're going to be able to pull that off back to Daniel chapter 6 who ain't sitting down is it Leah is it Lizzie is it Muffin oh it's Mean Jean sit down Mean Jean Daniel 6 and 7 all the presidents of the kingdom the governors and the princes and the councilors and the captains I've consulted it to, together to establish a royal statute that who shall ever ask a petition of any Elohim, a man for 30 days, save of you, O king, shall be cast into a den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree, sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of Medes and Persians, which alter not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house. And his windows being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knee three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his Elohim as he did a four times. Now, let's look at pray. Now, of course, you know, the three times a day for the prayer is rooted in the Psalm 55. That's where it's rooted from. And that's just if anyone wasn't aware of that. That's why you because you'll have Bruce tell you that's not in the law. No, it's not. This man didn't tell you how many times a day to pray. But the Lord told you to always pray. You know what I'm saying? Paul wrote to pray continually. And truth be told, for the super smart brews who think they know everything and say, well, Paul made that up to pray continually. Oh, that what the Lord said. Nothing. Well, Yahuwah told you in Psalms 1 to meditate on the law of Yahuwah. So if you're praying continually and you're praying always, then you will be thinking upon Yahuwah. And therefore, if you're thinking upon Yahuwah, then you trust in Yahuwah because your mind has stayed on him. And this is just that simple. You got dudes that are too smart for their own good who want to call themselves precept technicians, and these niggas really, really only work at Jiffy Lube. You know, at Jiffy Lube, anybody can work at Jiffy Lube. You know what I'm saying? Man? You ain't got to be no mechanic to work at Jiffy Lube to sit up under there and screw off no doggone, uh, what you call that, John? An oil filter. Empty out the oil pan. Anybody can do that. You ain't ASE certified. You ain't, you're not skilled. You're not a tradesman. 
You ain't got no qualifications. You ain't never seen a nigga hang and jump on his wall talking about I'm the best oil changer in Jiffy Lube history. Anybody, you know, Jiffy Lube is the equivalent of working at McDonald's in the auto world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's the equivalent. Because really, it, it, this is something too, right? That it come in with also being a, a, a average dude and being cool with it because you're replaceable. You're common. This means you have what's the, what's the word I'm looking for, man? You're unskilled labor. Usually when you're an average man, you're unskilled labor. Meaning you have no, you can be easily replaced. Anybody can come through your job. Any one of us right now could go in and work at GBLU right now. It don't take any skill or extensive training in order for you to do it. You, I don't know. Forty thousand now, you go. You might be a little below. They may, they may pay. They, I mean, right now they might be. Huh? Yeah, you ain't getting twenty dollars now. You probably getting about fifteen. You probably getting about fifteen because twenty twenty dollars an hour gonna get you in that forty thousand dollar a year range. Yeah. Yeah, but you ain't up under. But that, that's not my point. My point is, <laughs> you got, you got, you, your low skill, your low skill. See, you know, you know what you have to be in order to get paid highly at anything. You have to be in the top twenty percent of people who do something well. That's when you start really making some bread. When you end up start to be in a particular specific percentile of people who do something extremely well that you can demand a particular type of compensation. Do you know what I'm saying? And and that means you have skills that are valuable. You know what I'm saying? There's no such thing as a, a as a valuable oil technician at Jiffy Lube. You're not valuable because I can replace you. Do you know what I'm saying? See, something of value cannot be easily replaced. See, Yahuwah is valuable. You can't replace Yahuwah. There's nothing you can substitute in. People feel like they can substitute something in, but it's really somebody who's just desirous of going after their own lust. You know what I'm talking about? And that's not to knock anybody who's at a particular point, but as a man, you would have to know that if I have low skills, I, I can I can be easily replaced. Ain't nobody looking for somebody who's of, of, of a low skill level. Nobody wants that. Because, I mean, I could swap you out. That's why a lot of women get with a dude and just stick him out till something better come along because she know he's of low value. See, people hear that word value and they go to thinking about their intrinsic value. And again, value by definition is usefulness. By express definition. Then you have a second definition, of course, value. Because we were talking about this because we found some baseball cards, a couple Barry Bond cards on the track. And I'm like, them cards ain't worth nothing. Cause I used to collect cars and I know now baseball cars ain't worth nothing. It has to be extremely rare. You know what I'm saying? See, now you got stuff. You got niggas who's stupid enough to go online and bid, bid on squiggly pieces of art and pay millions of dollars for an NFT for it. That's how stupid people is. You know what I'm saying? That's how I've done. Ain't nothing rare about that. You're an idiot. That's what these niggas be on there doing. Little squiggly lines and paying millions of dollars for it. You know what I'm talking about? People so dumb in, in this particular country, how they get scammed out their money and then want to blame somebody. See, I can't even say that's a high value skill. That's just a rage right now. And people just stupid. People will buy anything. You know what I'm saying? People will buy anything for any reason if they think it can get them rich without them doing any type of work. You know what I'm saying? Now, hey, boy. What you got going on? Now, one thing I will say, and that nigga B.O.A. said this the other night, black people are the only people I see that talk down on people who are full-time content creators. And boy, I done seen people who make millions of dollars off being a full-time content creator. That ain't no just, oh, you just cut on the camera. It's a lot of money you got to put into that. And a lot of time. You know what I'm saying? You might look at them people who do them videos, and you'll be surprised how much money them people done put into the stuff. I ain't even talking about niggas who do skits. All type of stuff, you know what I'm saying? Straight up now, niggas make a lot of money on YouTube, man. I couldn't do it personally just because I just don't have the desire to do it. But I wouldn't look at you, ain't got no real job. You just make YouTube videos. How you gonna tell a nigga he don't got a real job and he make more money in a month than you make in a year? 
ain't never understood that with men who got a problem with dudes who make more money than you do in a whole year. You got niggas driving three times your salary. Niggas riding around in three times your salary. And you mad. What you mad for? I'm going to tell you why I'm mad, son. Ah, uh, behold the way to the leader. That's what you got. You real late with that, ma'am. What words you talking about? What? Oh, yeah, I ain't got to the verse yet. Look at you. You getting ahead in class. You trying to get people extra homework? Mm -hmm. Now you talking Greek. You got a belt. I ain't got one on. You got one? Mm -hmm. Somebody getting a whooping. Oh, you want a whooping too? I'm talking to Lizzie. Now, nah, Lizzie look like no. You think I whoop you? Huh, Lizzie? You think I whoop you? How you know that? I ever whooped you before? Oh, I have. I'm finna whoop you today, Lizzie. How about that? For the word that Deidre wanted to put on out there for you, it's Salah to pray. Sense of Boeing, pray. Sad, Lamar, and hey. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. Who you singing to? Hey, what y'all back here talking for? How about you fix your clothes and close your legs? Little grandma, baby. Ain't nothing wrong with you, boy. Salah. Saad, Lamad, hey. You gone, cuz? Yeah, that's what these got. Well, they are shepherds, man. It's, it's Hayden. Oh, that's what I'm scripting. That's Lamont in there. That's what Deidre said. Same thing. Behold the way to the leader. But what's going to get you to the leader for your prayers to be heard? I actually need to read Psalms 34 before I read John 15. Let's go to Psalms 34. Oh, I'm starting to get the musk. And I like it. You can start at verse one in Psalms 34. That's something too that being them sheep is too. A little musk. I know that's a vet is literal beaver secretion. If you get it real, it's hard to get real Savet. And castorium. Yeah, it is. Give it a little bump. That's elegant. Huh? Yeah, that. Shoot, that don't be on point. You don't smell the couple that you like, but and it definitely was in there. <laughs> you have. You enjoy it. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> no, I mean that's the difference between niche and designer. Designer is gonna make stuff that is mass appealing. And niche going to make stuff that could be considered to be challenging. It's not something that everybody going to be like, I like that. What about a beaver's butt? Maybe you can get up and smell it and put it in a bottle and spray it. It's niche. <laughs> Gotta find your niche. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's definitely something. Oh, it. Up it's, 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 butt. it's definitely. It smells like. Shoot, they got stuff they done took out of whale's belly. <laughs> Gotta find your niche. Psalm 34 and 1. I will bless you who at all times. His praise continually be in my mouth. Now we're talking about Yahoo Shah, right? Playing evening, morning, and noon. Let's go ahead and start to integrate that in that in the midst of what we're doing versus waiting towards the end. Who can pinpoint a time that Yahoo Shah played prayed in the morning? I'm gonna do it backwards. I ain't gonna go eat in the noon. In the morning, a morning prayer. 
I give you time, a morning prayer, because he said, I will bless you who at all times his praise shall be continually in my his praise shall be continually in my mouth. I give you verse two along with it. My soul shall make her boast in Yahuwah. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify Yahuwah with me and let us exalt his name together. So we need to establish a time when Yahuwah shall pray in the morning. I give everybody a moment to dig that on out. Morning prayer. No, not in, I'm talking about him literally praying in the morning. Yeah, him literally praying in the morning. Yeah, there's some so bad in here. Now this is uh from the cat. It's usually oh, that that civet from the anal glands of the exotic civet cat. Mm -hmm. There you go. It smells Cibet very pungent and fecal. Fecal. Gives an amazing fecal. radiance to warmth to floral. Now it's synthetically replicated because they can't kill animals anymore and take it out their butt. Mm. A butt monster. That's a little something. Mark 1 and 35. Mark 1 and 35. Come on over here to Mark 1 and 35, everybody. <laughs> so you know what? It smells a little buddy. <laughs> Let's look at Mark one and thirty five, everybody. Yes, sir. That's the way that we dealt with this originally. Saran mentioned the way that the last, the last, which has been about five plus years, the last time we dealt with this originally, that he played evening, morning, and noon on the stake at the third, sixth, and ninth hour. It was just doing something a little different before we hit the original. I, I believe I did say that last night that we weren't going to do it the way we did it the first time. But that is that is the original way that we dealt with that when he was on the stake. Well, these niggas scammed out. And in the morning, rising up, great, up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Now, let's pause. It said he went into a solitary place to pray. Why did he do that? He just was following his own instruction. Let's look at that Matthew 5 real quick, like. It's Matthew 6, excuse me. 6 and uh, 5. And when you pray, you shall not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they might be seen of men. Truly, I say unto you, they have their reward. But when you pray... Enter into your closet, and when you have shut the door, pray to your Abba, which is in secret, and your Abba, which see in secret, shall reward you openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetition as the heathen, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be, ne be not you therefore like unto them, for your Abba know what things you have need of before you ask of him. After this manner, therefore, pray you, our Abba, which art in Shamahim, Kadash be your name, your Malkuf come, your will be done. In earth as it is in Shamahim, and give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the esteem forever and ever. Amen. And for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. But also, this is the key point. Him. You let me just put it this. Let me ask this here, right? According to the law, right? He's telling you to forgive men's trespasses. Why is he telling you to do that according to the law? For to forgive men's trespasses according to the law. And this goes into something we mentioned last night, which was uh, uh, what was it? 
wanting to be like the most high. That's what it was. According to the law. And you can say that. That ain't the first one, but I'll allow it. He said Leviticus 26 or 25 with Jubilee and the releasing of the debt. But the reason you're supposed to, to forgive sins according to the law, if you're going to be like the most high, because he said, you who are Allahim, full of grace and mercy, long suffering, forgive sin and iniquity. That's what he do. So he telling you if he forgive and you're going to be my son, you're going to have to do the same thing because true kings forgive those who serve in their realm. True kings don't walk around holding grudges against people. They show mercy in order that the people might continually serve them. Remember, ain't that what he told them to do to Yerboam them? And what that boy did? The opposite. Oh, oh, yeah, he, listened to the young man. he listened to the young men. That's an example why you don't listen to young men because young men don't know nothing. If you had it, if you got an opportunity to get counsel from a young and an old man, usually you should go with the older man because they usually are going to be the ones who are going to give you wiser counsel. That I don't mean it's going to be like that every time. But for the most part, young men are going to go based off how they feel and what they feel like is going to be advantageous for them versus what's going to be advantageous for everybody. Those old men told him to do what was actually going to benefit him, but he was going to have to be a benefit to the people. Can't be no novice, and that's what he was. He was a rookie and lifted up in his pride. He got condemned. You understand? And on top of that, all he was telling them was, if you take the burden off your off their back, this these women, this woman gonna love you for the rest of your life. You ain't got the gorilla pimple. That's what they were really trying to tell him. You know what I'm saying? Ease up on your pimping and pimp a different way, and she gonna rock with you. But he thought he had the gorilla pimple. So you can't always be out here gorilla pimping. See, a lot of these boys be want to tell you the gorilla pimp. See, you know what I'm saying? See. Gorilla pimping cool, but it don't work long term. Gorilla pimping don't work long term. Because he taxed everybody. Yeah, he was taxing everybody. But Solomon taxed everybody. Yeah. Nigga be in America crying by taxes. We don't went over that before. Solomon taxed everybody. Bruise and all. They didn't get taxed as bad as the strangers did, but everybody had to break bread. Boy. Solomon like, well, I need my money on time. You know what I'm talking about? Where that money at? A lot of people, that's wicked. Who said it was wicked to give taxes? Because the book don't say Yahuwah didn't condemn him for it. All the things Yahuwah condemned him for. Was taxes one of them? No, it was not. So I mean, Yahuwah ain't had no problem with it. You ain't got to like it, but Yahuwah ain't had no problem with it. And if Yahuwah ain't had no problem with it, I ain't got no problem with it. Tax on, player. And all that means it just made it hard. You know what I'm saying? So like this here, Solomon kept his gators on their neck. You know what I'm talking about? He ain't let up. He pimped hard. You know what I'm talking about? Mm, I got concubines to take care of. 300. I got to pimp hard. My wife needs a side. Pimp hard, player. <laughs> hey, man, that to do. But yeah, that, that, that's, in, that's in the law, though. You forgive you forgive the trespasses and the debts because that's what Yahuwah does. That's in his attribute when he declared his name. When he declared his name, he said he forgives sin and iniquity. That's why Yahusha instructing you to do that. Also, well, and then of course, the main key thing that Yahusha prayed, what he said, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. You know what I'm saying? So when you look at it in a natural household, that woman is supposed to fulfill your will outside the house as in the house. Because everything that's supposed to be done is for the fulfilling of the will of the man of the house. Where a lot of come in with a lot of young men is they don't got no will for anybody to fulfill. You know what I'm saying? These dudes just living aimlessly talking about, you know, we just going to Eat, drink, have sex, and wash dishes. That don't get that woman nothing to do. Indeed, he was, sir. That don't get that woman nothing to do. There's nothing to fulfill. There's no defined mission. This, but look here, man. Most women are like children. In this regard, they want something to be a part of. 
Do you know what I'm saying? They want something to be a part of, to be able to labor towards, to say that they had a hand in a. Con we were watching this video, the clip. That's what I was trying to share in the chat, but it wouldn't let it. It wouldn't let it come up. It kept saying page not found. But it was a little boy went to somebody house. He came home. He said, "Daddy, I got something for you." He was excited. Opened up the bag, legit, then stole a bottle of bourbon. He said, "He said, what is it? Bourbon." He said, "You done took the people bourbon." He said, "You like bourbon?" He said, "I mean, I like it, but you kids can't be taking people's stuff." But Jit was jumping up and down. Grimming, like, are you satisfied? Are you pleased with what I brought to you? Now, how do we frame that in this aspect? When you seen them wise men come to the Lord, those men were excited to bring gifts to this young man, to do something for the person who's greater than you to see that they're pleased with your service. And in turn, and then again, you, you know this little boy ain't thinking like he finna get nothing back for a daddy for giving him a bottle of bourbon. But Jit thought so much of his daddy that I'm going to steal a bottle of bourbon from these people's house and bring it to my daddy. Because I know it's going to make my daddy happy. And it's going to be make me happy if my daddy happy. You know what I'm saying? And as a woman, you ain't supposed to be worrying about is he making you happy? You're supposed to be trying to make sure you're making him happy. And in turn, if you're making him happy, then of course he's going to make you happy. If you don't delight in pleasing a man, then you already behind the eight ball. Because ain't no man shouldn't be living his life to please you when you're the help me. Yahuwah doesn't live. He did not come and manifest himself just to please you. Who was Yahusha's first allegiance to please belong to? To his father. That's who he sought to please first in all things was his father, then to please you. And you should be delighted to please him because he saved your soul from death. Yeah, he did. He brought him some liquor, man. That joint was hilarious. I'm telling you, I'll show it to you. I'm telling you, my jit was jumping up and down with it about that liquor, man. Verse 36 of, of Mark chapter 1. Fix your clothes and close your legs. Ain't you a lady? All right, then. Mark 1, and Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they found him, they said unto him, all seek not seek for you. And he said unto them, let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also. Therefore came I forth. And he preached in their synagogues and throughout Galilee and cast out devils. Now, I said, before we get to the back end, can any of you look at a time where he prayed? Well, you, you're only going to be able to go to the stake for noontime. Where can you find a spot where he prayed in the evening? That should be easy. That's good. That's one, but I'm saying outside of that, because we don't get to the state. That is one of them. There's another instance also. Yes, that's Matthew 26 that she referring to. But you also have John 17. That was in the evening. Let's take a look. Let's look at John 17 first. We'll make that real swift because there's a lot of information in John 17. Because I put it to you this way for the context of how this works. Back up a little bit just so you can see the chapters. We're not going to read none out of chapter. Back up to 13. What they done did to that baby? Mm. Come here, little muffin. Come here, little muffin. Come here, little muffin. Come here, little muffin. Hey, hey. Little muffin, where you going? That baby ain't right. Now, in John 13, what is occurring? Passover. The Passover. You understand? And I'm going to mention this so you can see the context of the chapters. So in John 13, is Passover. What does the Lord do with his apostles at this time? He washed their feet. Now, this is right before, this, right here in verse 1. Now, before the feast of the Passover. So then when we come to ch chapter 14, chapter 15, chapter 16, all of this is conversations that he is having with them at the Passover. This is what's not contained. These conversations are not in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You're actually seeing what he is teaching them before it is time for him to offer himself. When you see chapters 13, 14, 15, and 16, 
you seeing what he was teaching them before he was prepared to offer himself. When you get to 17, this is probably along with what he prayed in Matthew 26, which you read when he asked for the cup to pass. Because it said he prayed three times. Now let's look at just some of the elements of what he prayed for. Of course, y'all already know. First half, what he prayed for was for his apostles. Verses 1 through 19 ain't got nothing to do with us. I didn't want y'all to know that. Verses 1 through 19, he's not praying for anybody in this room. He ain't praying for nobody who wasn't a part of them 12 who was sitting down there with him that particular evening. He wasn't praying for nobody but them. That's it. When you get to verse 20, that's when he begins. That's when all us get to come into play. And then that is the biggest part of the prayer because that's when he asked for you to be a card with his father. Because see, them apostles, they was already good. They was already set. They was already saved. They was already delivered. That's what the boys say. Paul don't know. He ain't walked with Jesus. You niggas is dumb. That's how you know dudes don't even know what an apostle is. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he didn't walk with him. You still to this day, we didn't talk about it many times. People still think it was only them 12 men that walked with the Lord. There's 120 men walked with him, man. You know what I'm saying? Because that's where they got Matthias from. It was 120 plus men walked with this man, but it was only 11 of them who got that dope off the top. You know what I'm saying? That heart, yes, sir. Who? Uh, the Lord? No, he was gone. When, when you look at Acts 1 and tell you he was with him for 40 days, uh, expounding to them even more things of the kingdom that's not even written in the text. You know what I'm saying? Then he ascended the, uh, the what is it? Tongues of fire. Tongues of fire come down. Them boys start speaking in tongues. And then all the people are like, oh, these boys drunk. And then Peter went to uh, went to teach them what they need to teach. Yeah. Before he left, it's not recorded. I'm not saying, I can't say that he didn't. It's just, it's just not recorded. Not in Acts anyway. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, my memory serving all the top is say, O Theophilus, this, that, then the third. The Lord was with him for 40 days, expounding on him the things pertaining to the kingdom. He told him, Hey man, I told you John baptized by water, but he told you that I was coming to baptize by the Ruach. They asked him, When would the uh the kingdom come to Yasharal? He said, It ain't none of your business to know the times of the Father. Just get ready to do this here, what I sent you to do. You understand what I'm saying? Get ready to lay this pimping down and then magging down, and I'm gonna holler at you on the back end. Bird. Yeah. My money. Is it my other It's in my wallet. Mm. It's in my wallet. So when you look at it again, I didn't want y'all to understand that. Verses one to nineteen ain't got nothing to do with us. 20 say, neither I pray for these alone, but for them which should believe on me through their word. And that's where you come in at. Because look at what he asked for the disciples. To keep them, that I've given them the word. I pray that you should not take them out of the world. But the, he about to send them to do a task. How would that even pertain to us? Guess what he said? I manifested my word, your word to them, and they have received it. He didn't manifest that to any of us. Oh, no, that's not the, the last supper, not Passover. That's just white men. White men just want to put themselves in a historical situation and circumstance. She was asking about who, who painted that? Leonardo da Vinci, ain't that the one who painted that? She told me, Shade asking about the last supper painting. Uh, one sissy deserves another. You know, so they deserve each other. How many of y'all had that painting in your house at your grandma's house? I know you had one in there. You from New York. Y'all like to put up little stuff like that. I mm, so y'all finna walk around here and say none of y'all grandma had Caesar Beaujay in your house. Man, let me tell you something, man. It's more black people got that white man hanging on their wall than any white people that I've never seen in my life. That's right. I ain't. I ain't. I've been in a lot of white people house, boy. I ain't never seen no white people hanging on the wall except they were Catholic. Now them Catholics. Look here, right? When we do trash outs, we don't throw away Bibles. We throw away all crosses, idols, pictures of, of Caesar Beaujay, all that go in the trash. 
ASAP. This place is cursed and damned. Oh, Saran said his granny got a Jesus grotto and Mary too. Painted. Probably with painting. So let's go ahead and look at those, those prayers that evening, morning, and noon prayer on that stake. We're going to have to slice through in multiple different locations for it. Jessica said, my mom had one. I threw it away. She going to cut you, girl. Mm -mm. Let me make sure. Oh, here. I don't think it's no prayers of the Lord. Let's start right here, right? Matthew 27. You can pick it up at 40. About 38, I guess. Yeah, right, what? And he's trying to cheese with it. That boy don't want that. That boy won't free. Then there were two thieves crucified with him, the one on the right hand, the other on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads, saying, you destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself if you be the son of Elohim, come down from the stake. Likewise, also the chief priests mocking him and the scribes and the elders said, he saved others himself, he cannot save. If he be the Malachi Yasharal, let him come down from the stake and we will believe him. He trusted in Elohim, let him deliver him now. And if he will save him, for he said, I am the son of Elohim. The thieves also which crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour unto the ninth hour, over all the land unto the ninth hour, and about the ninth hour, Yahushua cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabat. Now that is to say, my Elohim, my Elohim, why have you forsaken me? So if we're in the ninth hour and it's dark, Darkness, what do we have going on? There would be evening time. Now, this correlates to something else. That's in the law. Who knows what it is? If I add too much information, it'll pretty much tell you. And that's unfortunate. Yes, it, it, does, it does deal with the evening, morning, and noon aspect. Oh, no, 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 no. Because the knife, oh, that's. But it's that's dark. Not, that's not nice. Man. But it was here, though. Right. So, I mean, it was dark in the daytime. Yeah. Because y'all know what the time of the day, the ninth hour translates to. Callie, you know what time of the day the ninth hour is? Mm, she don't know, y'all. That's early in the morning. It's like, was going to say three or six. That's three o'clock in the afternoon. The, the sixth hour is noon. Because that's when you deal with the aspect of why all these boys be going to my... It's only 12 hours in. That's where that come from. Because that's how they counted it. They didn't count time at night. They did have a night watch. I ain't going to say that. I'm incorrect. They had a night watch. Calculated the same time. Because they could still calculate time by the moon. Because the moon moved too. Oh, this time is not plugged up. That's in the law. It's in the law. Okay, let's just make put it like this here, right? No, you have obligatory that you got to have an evening and morning sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? And that's what that obligatory in the law. That's another aspect about the praying three times a day. That one when you said what in the law. Three times. No, I said in the law. No, you mean it's like the three times a day one. Like, yeah, like, but not nothing directly to go pray. pray. But yeah, I get you. 
and you correlate to the sacrifice. You correlate to the sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? But there's no way in the law to say you must pray right, yeah. three times a day. That's what Bruce be looking no, you for. Said smart yard. You have understanding, you know why. Then you would have to look at why would you be offended at somebody who say I'm at least gonna pray three times a day. I told you that's why Muslims pray five times a day because that's where the Catholic Church took it from and just added two more to it. Well, you know, Muslims got to pray on the spot no matter where they at. That call go out. Bruce, you don't even got no call to go out. He just like, hey, man, you know the set times. He was like, shoot, you can do it when you want to. See, that's the difference. They didn't be trying to copy. You know what I'm talking about? Stinking bastards. Let's come over here to Luke. Let me see if we, I think we got the same thing in Mark. So Mark is not even needed. You'll be being redundant. Probably about Luke 23. Luke chapter 23. So we don't can't use 26, 27, 28 because he wasn't on the stake yet. When he was talking to them women, one in a prayer, two he wasn't on the stake. You know what I'm saying? But 23 and 32. And there was two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they would come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. The malefactors, the one on the right hand and the other on the left, and then said, Yahoo shall Abba forgive him, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Out of evening, morning, and noon, what portion of the day is Father forgiven, for they know not what they do? Based on the context of everything that's going on around you. If you want to go back and look at it, pick it up. In, we really got to pick it up about Matthew 27. Let's go look at Matthew 27 and Matthew 27 to show you what time of the day that was. Matthew 27 and 1. And when the morning was come, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Yahushua to put him to death. And when they bound him, they led, led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. So when you see him crying out in the daylight, Father, forgive him, for they know not what they do. What's some of the things that may come to your mind scripturally for that? I have something that came to my mind, but I want to see what came to yours. When he says, Father, forgive him. And again, this is going with the evening, morning and noon. He say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Well, at least that's how my mind works. Your mind might, might do it a little bit. Are you paying attention, or are you worrying about getting him some juice? Joy. Yes, sir. Adam. Indeed. Because he definitely forgave them, and he because they didn't know what they were doing. Mm. <laughs> and it's not no. I'm asking you what came to your mind. I didn't. I didn't say I was looking no, for an answer. Right, because that was better for the decision than them. It's like mm. like people knew what they were going to do. You say Moses. What about you, Callie? You looking tree? You think of Moses? Huh? Hey, little Johnny back there. He got his church clothes on. I see you back there, boy. That's just a shirt. Shoot. <laughs> huh? I like nigga like this here. Hey, boy, y'all can't be running in the hallway. I'm going to tell the pastor on this. Nigga do it, Nigga like this here. Nigga's always stealing my peppermint's little ugly little churn. You can't be saying that, Mark. You can't be talking about them people churning like that. Boom, nigga churn. The nigga's like, what came to my mind was this here, right? He said, Abba, forgive them for they know not what they do. What came to my mind is something that we read last night. He said that they are in darkness. Because these people didn't know what they were doing because they were in abject darkness. And they were in abject darkness because the earth was without form and void. And the Ruach of Elohim moved across it. And he said, let there be light. And there was light. 
Because if you don't know what you're doing, guess what that means? You walking in. You in dark. See, let's look at that Psalms 82. That, of course, I was thinking about what we dealt with last night. So, Psalms 82 and 5. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. And of course, the verse before that says, deliver the poor and needy and rid them out of the hand of the wicked. And where was he at at that particular time? In the hand of the wicked. And they do not, and neither did they understand, and they were walking in darkness. And that's why he came to uh, Paul and said that I came unto you to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to, to Elohim, that they might receive forgiveness of sins and be sanctified by the faith of the inheritance that's in me. Come over here to Matthew, Acts 26, because I didn't say it properly. So now it means I have to read it. Acts 26, verse 14. Close your legs. You got a dress on. You want people to see your drawers? Clearly you do. And when they were falling to the earth, I heard a voice, leave her alone. She can govern herself. And when we were all falling to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, saying in the Abarim tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecute you me? Is it hard for you to kick against the pricks? And I said, who are you, Lord? He said, I'm Yahusha, whom you persecute. But rise and stand upon your feet, for I've appeared unto you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of these things which you have seen and of those things in which I will appear unto you, deliver you from the people and the Gentiles unto whom now I send you, and to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto Elohim, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by the faith that is in me. Because remember, I referenced what Paul said. If they would have known, they wouldn't have done it. See, let's look at, I mentioned this here last night also. Let's look at what Peter told him in Acts chapter 4, I believe. It might be chapter 3. What y'all done did to that baby? Acts chapter 3, verse 11. Hey, boy, you sit in that chair and be happy. Hey, hey, hey. I, need to, I don't care about that today. Mm, didn't take much to amuse you. Of course, I am now pleased. Acts 3 and 11. It's going to say L. We talked about it last night, uh, what it read and, and what it actually say. I ain't in that. Oh, I'm done in Daniel, so. Yeah, it's going to say El Yon, which means king. Really going to sit back as son of a king. I would agree when it say you are gods and all of you are sons of the king. That's how we read language wise. Huh? Acts 3 and 11. And as the lame man which was healed uh, held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, You men of Yasharal, why you marvel at this? Or why you look so earnestly on us as though by our own power of Kadash we have made this man to walk? The Elohim of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the Elohim of our fathers have esteemed his son, Yahusha, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Kadash one and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the prince of life whom Elohim raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name through faith in his name made this man strong whom you see and know, yea, the faith which is by him that have given him this perfect soundness and presence of you all. And now, brethren, I walk through ignorance. You did it, as did also your rulers. So when you're in ignorance, you're in darkness. You don't know where you're going. You don't know what you're doing. You understand? Now, when he say, Abba, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And that's why I mentioned that what came to my mind is what happened in the beginning. Y'all remember what it means for the earth to be without form and void? Let's take a look at it. 
Genesis 1 and 1, if you would. I remember when you was a baby. They used to call you Shirley. Now they call you Butterbean. They call you Butterbean? What they call you? They call you at school. They call you what? What they call you at school? They call you a baby. Oh, I thought they called you Butterbean. Why you act like you can't talk? But you talk a lot, though. Genesis 1 and 1. The beginning, in the beginning, Elohim created the Shamahim and the Arats. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Ruach of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. Let's take a look at without form. Just to stoke your memory. Tahu, a tohu, tau, hey, and u. And what does it mean by definition? Formlessness, confusion, unreality, emptiness, formlessness, nothingness, that which is empty or unreal, a wasteland, a place of chaos. Vanity. Look at this place, right? And again, it shows you that how Elohim is not the author of confusion because something without form has no order. Therefore, it is full of chaos. If it's full of chaos, that means it has no sin. I mean, it has sin in it, which takes us back to the point why you must be made in the image of the sun and to be like the most high. Why would Satan want to be in the form of the most high? And he is the definition of confusion. Come here, Joe. Come on, come on, over. Come on, Joe. Come on, Joe. Come on, Joe. Come on, Joe. Come I don't know. He's looking like he on a TV show and he's supposed to be staying in character. <laughs> but he can't do it. <laughs> I really made me want to say that because God was thinking about something. They kept, I seen that clip of when Mark Curry was on the Jamie Foxx show and he jumped up there and Jamie Foxx turned his whole back to the camera when he ran up on the dude who played uh, the Yeah, I bought Jesse. He took him out. It was a square, and he ran over there and, and, and got in that nigga face. That nigga Jamie Foxx turned. It was about three, four of them turned their face from the camera. And so they can't hold character. And he probably was. That boy was a fool. But you see that? Now, let me ask y'all this here, right? If you're crucifying the son of Elohim, wouldn't you say you'd be full of confusion? Wouldn't they say they'd be empty? But why would they be empty? Because they're not filled with the word. Ain't no light in them. Remember, he say to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. That's Isaiah 8 and 20, by the way, Michael. I know you don't know what that is. Here. I'm trying to help you out because I'm throwing something out there. I know you don't know off the top. Some of them, they didn't, that's a that's a that's a Hebrew special. See, you don't know, you don't know the rules online. I'm not being funny. You think I'm being funny. These niggas can tell you. Isaiah 8 and 20, that's a Hebrew special. That's the boy's favorite thing to throw at you if you ain't saying something that, that they agree with. Come over here, I'll show it to you. Acts chapter 8, verse 13. I mean, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 13. Yeah, you already know you need to tighten up. You think because you got whatever them tights on, that that means you can just sit any kind of way. You're not a boy. You got lady parts. Don't nobody want to see your lady parts. Matter of fact, make it Isaiah 8 and 9. And it still go back to the to the person who suffered from the man who was his equal and his acquaintance. And also, because we talked about that the week before. Remember when it said, it want no changes in them? Y'all remember when it's what that meant? And that Psalms 55? Let me read it for you in case you forgot. 
Your song 55 and 19, Allahim shall hear and afflict them. He, even he that abide of old, say law, because they have no changes. Therefore, they fear not Allahim. Y'all remember what they have no changes meant? They refuse to repent. They refuse to repent. Well, we got a Jaguar. That's who I used to like. And uh, shoot, the niggas make, make you want to go back to the team you was rolling with before 1995. <laughs> you, you start, you started early. <laughs> yeah, man. Now I like three teams when I was young, man, and there was a reason for it: the Bengals, because uh, Boomer Sison, left-handed quarterback; the Bears, because that was the first Super Bowl I remember; and the 49ers because of Joe Montana. And after a while, it's just I like the 49ers. You know what I'm talking about? Cowboys and 49ers. Deion Sanders. That, how that works? I say the Cowboys and the 49ers. I think I was a kid. In the 90s? <laughs> Absolutely. Deion Sanders played football. You had to pick them. I was a Deion Sanders fan. Mm, so you ain't like neither one of them teams. No. I don't like Deion I like the big play. <laughs> Isaiah 8 and Colonel Sanders. Isaiah 8 and 9. <laughs> Associate yourselves, O oh, you people, and you shall be broken in pieces. Give ear, all you far of countries, and gird yourselves, and you shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, and you shall be broken in pieces. Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and shall not stand, for Elohim is with us. For you who spake thus unto me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people. Same, say you not a confederacy to all to whom this people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear you their fear, nor be afraid. They had a confederacy against the Lord. If you don't know what that means, that's a conspiratorial effort. And he did not fear these people in any shape, form, or fashion. Sanctify Yahuwah of hosts himself and let him be your fear and let him be your dread, which takes you back to sanctify them with their truth. Your word is true. I sanctified myself by the truth. So he sanctified and set himself apart by Yahuwah. This, this is also that evening prayer in John chapter 17 to where he had no fear of what these people were talking about. And he shall be a, a sanctuary, but a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both houses of Yasharal for a gin and for a snare and to the habits of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken, be snared and be taken. Michael, if you don't know what that means, that means that he will either be a place of rest for some and a stumbling block for others. And that goes back to the same gospel was preached every Shabbat out of the law of Moses. And you niggas didn't believe and you fulfilled the scriptures and killing them. So that very same rock that you have rejected that became the head of the corner is going to fall upon your head and pulverize you and turn you into dust. Yeah, that's what that means. Verse 16, bind up the testimony and seal the law among my disciples and I will wait upon you who will that hide his face from the house of Jacob and I'll look for him. Behold, I have I and the sons which you who have given me are for signs and wonders and Yasharal from you who of hosts which dwell in Mount Zion. Those sons in this instance are the apostles and they are the signs and wonders that is mentioned in uh matthew 28 and a couple other places it's fourth is the signs and wonders and when they shall say unto you seek unto them that have familiar ruachs and under wizards that peep and mutter shall not a people seek unto their alahim for the living to the dead niggas around here looking for dead people want to go to funerals and wear dead man shirts mm -hmm. And I say go to funerals, not the funeral itself, but they like to go to the grave site and stand out there. After the funeral over, looking at the dirt. That nigga dead, cuz. Leave. You see the uh, niggas making dogs on, on man, not mannequins, but you know, the stand-up poster. Yeah. Well, not a lot of people do it, but some people do that for a funeral, a live action funeral. That's been going on for a while. Dude on a motorcycle, nigga playing video games. 
Yeah, cut outs. Oh, you know, I've seen a couple people do that. I'm gonna take a picture next time. Yeah, I can let this move with the nigga take a picture. That I'm gonna tell you something right and say right. That that if, if a nigga do a cut out of a dead man and act like that he's smoking marijuana or alcohol with that dead man, that speaks to a level of mental neurosis and psychosis that only the Lord himself could explain. <laughs> But I, hey man, niggas, niggas love to worship the dead now. Man, you know that nigga ain't with you, nigga. That junk gonna decay, nigga. That's cardboard. You know what I'm saying? I just seen a, a, a clip. I just seen a clip. Uh, I think it was right after King Von died, and his, and the girl he was messing with were like, "It's raining outside. That mean he made it to heaven, y'all." I'm like, what? They was like, "Yeah, if it rained." When somebody died, that's God crying. That means they made it to heaven. <laughs> no, nah, she was just the day he died. Oh, you see the voice box when you and dog that dude did like a little voice box. Man, they got you. Yeah, man, he got me, man. He sounded, he kept me sounding just like the whole time. Like, yeah, man. See, I don't know the side. Them boys got me. They caught me slipping. You got to see it, dog. I'm about a hundred million views. Well, I'm going to tell you something, man. Y'all already know what that text say. When you die, your thoughts perish, your love, your hatred, and your envy, and everything else. Go with it. You ain't went to heaven, boy. You in a box. I I, I mean, that, that's that, that's uh, what you call that? That's nigga stuff. God cried when my grandma died. She made it to heaven. No, it rained, nigga. You know what I'm talking about? That's like another rain. It was going to rain whether your grandma died today or not. Why would God be crying? Why would he, he be crying? Why she? <laughs> but it's the thing. Don't nobody question these things in depthly. You just take it. You should be crying. But guess what, though? Guess what the text say? The text say to cry when somebody born and to rejoice when they die. That's what the text say to do. Oh, you ain't know that, Monica? Oh, you did not know that. Huh? Yeah, that's why she was crying. Well, shoot, you tell me, nigga. You shoot. I done said it about 17 times. Who know where it's at? Ain't in Joe. Yeah, it's in Ecclesiastes. Let me read this verse 20 for Michael. That's what we came here for. She done left. She had to go use the pot. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. Come over to Ecclesiastes chapter 7. See, Grandma, let me go get my belt. Get my belt for you. Go get my belt! Oh, you're not going to get my belt? I need a belt for Grandma and Lizzie. And Muffin. Grandma, Lizzie, and Muffin. Oh, no, she ain't got no fronts. You know? That means, shoot, I, she, I told her we had her back. She better watch her front, but she ain't watching. Mm. So, you know what I'm saying? Now she got the lizard, mm. so I, That's a song. Y'all know about that song. I, think, so I got your back, but you best to watch your front because it's the niggas who front. They be pulling stunts. Hey, he ain't told you no lie. Please ask these seven and one. A good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for it is the end of all, all men, and the living lay it to his heart. Y'all don't remember what they mean? Shayla, you remember what they mean? She don't remember what it mean. What about you, Lee? You remember what that meant? I understand. Michael, your mother, I'm talking to your mother, and you're trying to talk to her while I'm talking to her. And that is very rude of you, sir. Good day to you, sir. How are you? Thank you. If any of you know what that means? Verses one and two, that's all you need. Come on, Grandma, go get that belt. That belt. Because after I whoop you, I got to whoop Lizzie. And after I whoop Lizzie, I got to. I whoop muffin. And after I whoop muffin, I got to whoop pot. After that, then I got to whoop joy. Whole heap. Whole heap. No. We passing them out like ice cream. Yeah. Everybody like ice cream. 
We tried to get Muffin a job at the circus. They were going to pair in brownies and ice cream, but she didn't want to go work there. Lizzie, you want to work for brownies and ice cream? You don't want no brownies and ice cream? That's what they pay with. No brownies and ice cream? Oh, y'all don't recall. So that means I got to help you out. Is that what you're telling me? Well, as far as the gospel is concerned, the day of Yahushua's death was better than his birth. What good was his birth? What good was his birth? Number one, it told you a good name is better than precious ointment. Remember what Judas was on? That ointment could have been, he didn't care about that ointment. Yahushua had a good name. Judas did. Good name better than that. But you don't realize when the Lord was born, what good did that do in comparison to his death? His death was way more important than his birth. Well, guess what? You dying means absolutely nothing in, 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 compared to your birth or when you born, but you're going to hell. That's right. I'm talking about literal hell, the grave. First and foremost, you're going to the grave. Off top, we ain't talking about no him now, no Jehoshaphat. Well, you're going to the grave. I mean, you got to get born again. So your initial birth don't relate. Now, if you're born again and you die in Mashiach, guess what? The day of your death was better than the day of your birth. You didn't have Elohim the day you were born. You can have him in the day you die. But gospel-wise, the day of Yahushua's death is greater than his birth. His death redeemed your soul. He's nothing for you. Now, his birth was what allowed him to get to the point that he could be able to die to save your soul. But in comparison to two, the day of his death was better than his birth. Now, that second part is better to go to the house of mourning and the house of feasting. Yahushua looked them people dead in the face, his apostles specifically, and said that I'm exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. And they said, and the living will, and it is the end of all men, and they don't lay it to heart. And his apostles didn't lay it to heart until he resurrected from the dead. Because they was ready to go into the house of feasting, and he was mourning the whole time. Mm, that's what it said. That's right, uh, Brother Craig. His death brought forth life, which is in Genesis 50. Mm, that's why he prayed. And guess what? That go back to the point where we was in Genesis 1. The earth was without form and void. So the earth was with confusion, emptiness, because you know why the people were empty. You ain't had no ruach. What was you filled up on? You ain't had none. Hold on, he said, we did with our form. Let's look at void, because he said, and void. And of course, void is bohu, emptiness, void, waste, undistinguishable ruin. And that's the end of the matter. So when he, pray, when he in the morning is praying, I will forgive him, they know not what they do. They empty, they without form, they're void, they're dwelling in darkness. How would they know? That's why Peter said, if they would have known, he said, I pray out of ignorance you did it, which go back to what we read in John 9. Yeah, I say, I, I would rather you say I was blind and then your sin be removed. But since you say you'll see, you see, your sin remain because you know what you're doing. You did it in the light. You ain't do it in the dark. That's the significance of that first prayer. And that's why you will hearken to that prayer. And it also hearkens to the point of merciful, forgiving thousands of them. Or showing mercy to thousands of them that keep his commandments. Let's come back to the book of Luke. Luke 23. I know I think we're still in Psalms 34. Why you ain't when it got my belt? Oh, so you thinking this a game? It's gonna be me and you, grandma. Me and you. You're not a grandma. Yeah, you is. And I've been calling you grandma your whole life? All right, then. You a grandma today. I ain't got nothing to do with what your daddy called you. Huh? Uh, I enjoy. I enjoy. Why you got a white girl voice? 
You been smoking cigarettes in the back? No. Thank you, too. Dang, I was talking about you. That nigga dimed you outside. You smoking Winston's? No. Yes. I saw you. <laughs> I did not. Sometimes I do. Oh, wow. Well, sometimes you like to smoke cigarettes too? What's a cigarette? Luke 23 and 44. It was about the sixth hour, and it was darkness over the uh, all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when y'all stop shaking the table, boy. And when Yahusha had cried with a loud voice, he said, Abba, into your hands I commend my Ruach. Having thus, he gave up the Ruach. Let me ask y'all this question. What psalms does this come from? Hmm. We've already dealt with this psalms. I can't even keep up with all the psalms we done done already. I definitely don't mark them off. But for man, no, you tell me, sir. Let me get my facts straight. Let me get my facts straight. Which verse you talking about? When I give up the ghost, give up the ruach. He say, Father, into your hands I commend my ruach. Sean has answered correctly. Is it 31? Yes, it is. Psalm 31, please. Hey, be quiet. For I num 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 your butt. <laughs> Ain't no pause. You laughing till you in here crying. Mm -hmm. yeah, ain't nobody playing with you, Joe. Psalms 31 and 1. Stop playing, Joe. Sit down and be quiet. Joe, stop playing. Stop playing. All right. Psalms 31 and 1. And you, O oh, Yahuwah, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Because all those who believe on him shall never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. Deliver him in faith. Bow down your ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Again, what are we looking at? We're looking at prayer. Yet again. Be you my strong rock for a house of defense to save me. You are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Because my father has given me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know his commandment is life everlasting. Pull me out of the net that they have privily laid for me. For you are my strength. And we already read about that net. What is that net that they laid for, Michael? What is the net? Huh? The who? The comforter? No, ma'am. You know what a net? You know what it means to lay a net for something? Yes. Remember, right? We just read in Isaiah chapter 8. He said, don't call it a confederacy. He said, don't fool with him. The net is Judas and those band of men. They laid a net to catch him so they could kill him. This goes back to the Psalms 82. They know not. They walk in darkness. The foundations of the earth are out of course. And what does it say? Into your hands I commit my Ruach. You have redeemed me, O Yahuwah, Elohim of truth. So what you see in that Psalms 31 is the aspect of what's in that Luke 23. He praying for salvation from the people who have sought to kill him. Because he said, evening, morning, and noon, I shall cry aloud, and you will hear me and save me. This is, again, another aspect of being able to cast your burdens upon you, that even in the midst of distress, you can be delivered. And each instance that we're looking at the Lord, especially more so on the stake, you're seeing him in a time of distress of people who have sought to do him harm for no other reason because he trusted in his father. And that is the point that Yahusha never put Yasharal or himself before the will of his father. That's why the man was able to be resurrected from the dead. 
See, like I say, man, a lot of men complain about a lot of things, but you complain about these women because you have not, like I told y'all what Skip Bayless said, Skip Bayless would never have a negative interaction from a woman because he didn't already told this woman what time it is. He told her first quarter, you come second to my job. Told that woman that first quarter. You know what a lot of these niggas do? You string that woman alone and you tell her A, B, C, and D instead of being 100 and say, hey, man, this is what it is and this is what it ain't. You can roll with it or you don't. How do you think you're going to have a negative interaction with a person when you coming to them and you telling them what time it is first quarter? That this is what it's going to be. I'm never putting you first. My job always comes first. Basically, he told her, I come first, meaning my will is going to supersede your will. See, most people can't do that. Do you think you'd have a negative interaction with somebody if you told them that off the top? They already know what they signing up for, so they know they're going to have to get down with it or not mess with it. You who are telling you what time it is off the top? See, and most people can't handle it. It was funny, right? Because I need to be eight minutes all the day, which is true if you this type of dude. If you're a real demanding man, and as a woman, you're not used to being with a demanding man, you wouldn't be able to live with a man like that every day. You know what I'm saying? Because the level of demands that he going to have that you perform, you're going to crumple under that pressure. You wouldn't be able to deal with it. I'm mentioning that because why do you think so many people walk away from the book? If they're actually being given the word and Ruach and the truth, the level of demand that it's going to take for you to dwell in Yahuwah's house is too much for some people to take. That's why they dip. Because it's a demand every day. There's no days off. Ain't no chilling. Ain't no you could kick your feet up and relax. This man has demands every single solitary day. That's why the mass majority of people can't teach the gospel or deal with it. Because you're going to want to do what you want to do in your life versus meet the demands that that man requires. That's why this man told you what? Can't put your hand to the plow looking back. Because he was talking about people who's supposed to be ministering. Y'all do know that, right? In that Luke chapter 9. That wasn't about no regular run-of-the-mill person. Those were people who were supposed to be laboring in the ministry. He said, man, you got to be able to do this here. You weren't about burying your daddy, going back, telling your people you finna dip. Boy, I got work for you to do. He said, no, man, I got to go. Let me at least go do this here. What you care about them for? See, the average person, they can't look at that because that's a demand. Most women ain't never dealt with a man that demanded. Man, I remember watching what it was. Was it Pimp Sup Hoes Down or American Pimp? That nigga say one of my hoes came and asked me, could I get Mother's Day off? He said, for what? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? He said, for what? Money got, to be made. <laughs> Money got to be made. I don't care nothing about that. But I'm mentioning that because most people will be like, you know, it's such and such. And you move with emotion to let a person do this or do that. Man, ain't nobody got time for that. That's tight. That's tight. You know what I'm saying? You got to think about that. You feel what I'm saying? Most people can't deal with that. Because I'm telling you, and I'm just like I said, using that natural example. But you who have got demands, boy. You who have got demands. And you got to meet them every day. That man said, you got to take up your stake and follow him every day. That's a demand every day that you seek doing what he wants to be done over what you want to be done. And everybody don't have that type of, everybody don't love him that much. Everybody don't want to be in his presence that much. Everybody don't delight in him that much that I'm willing to make those sacrifices and meet those demands. It's not willing to do it. And you know, and it is what it is, man. Come on back. I think we got one more in John. Is it one more in John? Yeah, John 19 and 28 a good deal. Joseph. Joseph. Sit down. In the bottom. John 19, 20, that vessel of full of vinegar, and they filled it with a sponge and vinegar and put it upon the hyssop and put it to his mouth. 
And when Yahusha therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the Ruach. Now, y'all know that it is finished. What does the it is finished go to, Michael? You didn't get me no funding, sir. Nigga, this nigga got to talk about some fun. That ain't no fun. Oh, yeah, he's watch out. I ain't gonna lie to you. They send me that. Come down, love him. No, we got no fun for him in my life. No, he talking about he from that kids. SBA loan. That's not a, You didn't get no fun. <laughs> No, that's that dude that did that SBA joint. Now you're talking about get you didn't you didn't fund me with anything. The government did. <laughs> you didn't do anything when it comes to that. You're just talking. Mm, everybody wants to say they want a piece of the pie. Sleepy Joe say he wanna let you know. What's that 19 and 20? What does that go to, Michael? It is finished. Do you know? Are you aware? Are you cognizant? What does it go to? Yeah. Are you asking me or are you telling me? Are you sure about this? Do you need a phone or friend? Do you need a phone or friend? No, no. What's the other two options they get? <laughs> you, yeah, oh, that's it had to be four other answers, three other answers go along with it. Is that your final answer? Oh, and then the audience. Would you like to ask the audience? I don't want to make sure you're comfortable. Would you like to ask the audience or are you certified in your answer? No, ask the audience means ask them what they think the answer is. Is it correct? Is that what you asked? Well, I don't care what they say. You act like it's the only like they the only people in here. It's a bunch of men in here though. You ain't add none of them. Mm. It does. Monte saying it's good. Would you like to put some money on it? I'm just asking what you like to put away. On. I'm trying to see how confident she is. <laughs> and the answer is correct. What'd you say? What do I get? No, because she wasn't confident in it. I got to see how confident she is. Cause you just see, there's a difference, right? And clearly, maybe y'all never do. There's a difference. Somebody asks you a question and you answer it as if you're asking, is it correct? That tells me you're not confident in what you're telling me. Because that's not how you answer a question. Is it? If you say, is it, that means you're not confident in what you're saying. You don't answer a question by forming your answer in question form. See, y'all may have not ever been told that, but that relays a lack of confidence in, 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 the, in the answer. I would rather somebody be firm and wrong than to be confused and, and right, because then that's going to spill out continually in everything that you do. And it will also hamper you to make firm decisions when you need to need to make a firm one because you doing this and doing that. Is it right? Should I do it? Hey, you just got to do it and, and, and go with it. If it's wrong, you correct yourself. Yeah, it's better to be firm and wrong to be confused and right because you it's just the same as being firm and wrong because when you're confused and right, you go halfway and you end up doing it wrong and you should have just, just be bold in your actions. You know what I'm saying? It's not a big deal, especially something like this. It's not a big deal if it's wrong. But if you if you questioning yourself if something is correct, you would have. And the reason, the main key point is to notice here, and it may be different because y'all women when you're under pressure. Because when you're under pressure and you got to make a snap decision or give a correct answer, you're liable to fold because you'll keep questioning yourself over and over and over again instead of just going. Especially if you know it. If you know it, go with it. 
Don't be questioning yourself in your mind. Is it right? Is it wrong? You already know it was right, but you're trying to convince yourself that it's not right. Why would you do yourself that way if you already know that it's correct? Remember, it says that the righteous are what? Bold as a lion. What does that bold mean? It's confidence. Confidence is tied into what you know. When you don't know, then you're not confident. When you're not confident, you have missteps. Oh, that first Kings 19 and 20. Oh, that's that's vastly different. That's vastly different. Hold on. First Kings now, he's asking the difference between the two. That's that's two totally different scenarios. <laughs> Well, the difference is when you see what that with Elijah and Elisha is, Elijah didn't go to Elisha and say, come follow me. And that's that's the that's the difference. And this is the verse that he's referring to. First Kings 19 and 19. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And when he went to 12 and, and, and he with the 12th and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And Elijah left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, let me, I pray you kiss my father and mother, then I will follow you. And he said unto him, go back again for what have I done to you? See, this is a different because this is what Luke nine is rooted in, but there's a different because Elijah acting like he ain't choose the man. But Elisha knew what time it was. What does that mean when it said he cast his mantle on him? Y'all know what that means? He put his garment on him. Y'all know what that means? You know what that means to put his garment on him, Michael? You know what that means? Put his, let, me, let me get the word mantle for you to help you out there. And this what you have here that is adoreth. That is glory, cloak, glory, magnificence. Mantle, cloak made of fur, fine material, also a prophet's garment. A prophet's garment. What is a prophet's garment? It's a garment that a prophet wears. Prophets wear a certain garment. Paul, Zechariah 13 for, for young birds. Oh, I can't tell you what it looked like, baby. I look like an artist to you. I look like I draw clothes. I look like I make clothes. No, no. <laughs> Who got a personal folder of garments? Oh, no. Chronicles. Mm. <laughs> mm. Why they do muscle man like that? Chronicles. <laughs> Zechariah chapter 13. <laughs> Make sure I'm in the right spot for what I need. Zechariah 13 and 1, if you would. <laughs> and that day there shall be a fountain open to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanliness. And it shall come to pass in that day, say if you who have hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land. They shall no more be remembered. And I will also cause the prophets of the unclean Ruach to pass out of the land. It shall come to pass that when they shall yet prophesy, then this, then his father and mother that begat him shall say unto him, you shall not live for you speak lies in the name of Yahuwah. And his father and his mother that begat him shall thrust him through when he prophesied. And it shall come to pass and that that day the prophet shall be ashamed every one of his vision when he have prophesied, neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive. Now, see, notice here, right? Because prophets had a, if you want to say that, a particular garment. They were known. People knew who the prophets was back then. But when he cast his garment on him, also you're looking at casting his, his glory or his splendor, his esteem. Now, come and look at Luke 9, of what this is referencing. Because like I said, it's the root of Luke 9, but the difference is, like I said, uh, Elijah said, what I did to you, bro, what did you, what did you come up with? Now you act like I did something to you, like you supposed to be following me. Go and do what you got to do. Now, when you come to Luke 9 and 57, 
And it came to pass that as they went in the way of certain, said unto him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. Yahushua said unto him, foxes have holes and birds of the air nest, but the son of Adam have not where to lay his head. He said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, stop pushing on the table, boy. Get off the table. And he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father and my mother. Hey, boy, get your hand off the table. If I tell you again, you're sitting on the floor. You're skinning and grinning with a sheepish little grin, and you're going to be upset. Now you think I'm playing with you. I'm not playing with you. What you laughing for? I'm not playing with you. <laughs> Look at you. You're going to hit your head. You'll be okay. Now, I guess that's what happened when you play the court jester. <laughs> you told me you play the court jester. You all right? <laughs> you all right? <laughs> so we play the court jester. Luke 9 and 59. And he said unto another, follow me. But he said unto, but he said, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father. Yahushua said unto him, let the dead bury their dead. Go you and preach the kingdom of Elohim. And others also said, Lord, I will follow you, but first let me go bid them farewell, which were at my house. Yahushua said unto him, no man having putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of Elohim. Like I said, now the kings is the, the reference point. The difference is Yahushua telling them, boy, you need to go. Elijah like, I don't know you. Come back over here to First King 19. Now he's going to tell you right here. 19 and 20. And he let let me see what it said. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, let me, I pray you, kiss my father and my mother, and I will follow you. Because that then ain't there. It says, and I will follow you. What verse you at? 19 and 20 of Kings. And he said unto him, go back again, for what have I done unto you? He telling him, go on back to the house. I ain't did nothing to you. And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them, boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen, gave unto the people, and they did eat. And then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Now, before he before he goes, what does Elijah go do? He makes a sacrifice and go feeds the people. And then he goes to serve. This is also another element of a man being able to serve before he can leave. Because who took Elijah's place? Elisha did. And what did Elisha ask for specifically upon taking his place? A double, a double portion of his ruach. He said, boy, you've asked a hard thing. He said, but nevertheless, you see me taking up. up. I got you, boy. <laughs> mm. Go back to Psalm 55. You know what I'm saying? Same concept, just a different variation. Because he told him to go back. Yahusha didn't tell buddy to go back. But first Kings is the root. That's the basis of that, of that example. Because that also the difference in between the two is there was no kingdom of Elohim for Elisha to be laboring towards versus what this man in Luke was. When you got a kingdom to, to labor towards, what you mean you looking back? Do you want to rule or have dominion? Or do you want to hang out at your people house? Hmm. If you want to rule or have dominion, or do you want to hang at your people house? Psalm 55, where we at with it? Verse 16. As for me, I will call upon Elohim and Yahuwah shall save me. Evening, morning, and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. And he heard him too. He have delivered my soul in Shalom from the battle that was against me, for there was many with me. I think we were still in Psalm 34. I ain't even get that far. I'm about to Psalm 34. We was in about verse 3 with it. I was really coming for something else, but we run up against time. Come to Psalm 66 real quick. Just one point in Psalm 66. <laughs> Psalm 66. And 13. 13. I will go into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay my pay you my vows, which my lips have uttered and my mouth has spoken when I was in trouble. I will offer unto you burnt sacrifices of fatlings with the incense of rams. I will offer bullocks with goats. Selah. Come in here, all you that fear Allahim, and I will declare what he have done for my soul. 
I cried unto him with my mouth and was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. Now, I want you to just sit back and look at what he means. Yes, sir. What he means when he say regard. First thing with regard is ra'ah. What is ra'ah? That is to see, to look at, to inspect, to perceive. If you look at or perceive iniquity in your heart. Of course, you know what heart is. Iniquity is a vin. And of course, that is trouble, wickedness, or, or the trouble of iniquity or idolatry. So if you regard wickedness or idolatry, it says you who is not going to hear. And of course, here is Shema, and that is to hear. We ain't read, never read John 15. I guess we'll get that in a second. He said, but truly, Elohim have heard. He have attended to the voice of my prayer. Baruch be Elohim, which have not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy for me. When we look at attended, that is kashab, that is to hear, to be attentive, or to be inclined. Remember what the Lord said? He said, Abba, I know you hear me always. His ears are always open unto his prayer. That Psalm 34 was going to reference that as well, that his ears are always open to the requests of the righteous. Yahuwah's ears is all, and that's my point about talking about on the natural. If a woman does her job in serving her husband, his ears should always be open to her request. If you're not doing your job, why would you expect this man to honor and grant you anything? And doing your job ain't cooking and cleaning. Because that's just regular life stuff. Because if you ain't had no man, you still have to cook and clean, I would hope. Guess what? I, I, I wager, right? Because I'd have been around a few. There's a lot of women. If they ain't had no man in that house, they wouldn't clean. Not regularly. You know what I'm talking about? Not regularly because they, they would see no need to it. Like I told you, they'll keep it clean for guests. <laughs> Let it. You know what I'm talking about? But you're talking about every day on point? I done seen too many of them. No. Draws, clothes, strong shoes, dishes in the sink. Mm, mm, yeah. Not blunt guts on the on the on the cabinet. <laughs> not on the cabinet. On the coffee table. On the coffee table. Mm, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? All that. Yeah. Cause we know you don't know. See, you don't want to see. You don't want to see no woman's house when she know when when you know when she know you're coming. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, you got to do the pop up. You know what I'm saying? You got to do the DCF home visit. Oh. <laughs> 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 Mm, you gotta do the DCF home bit. <laughs> have to visit get your kids took right there, Have to visit get your kids took. If you really want to know how she living, you got to do the DCF home visit. You can't be on no. You coming through Thursday night, baby? Because she gonna get it right for you. Everything gonna be in place. But if you hit that. Oh, you, you calling as you walking up to the door. Always oh, in the neighborhood, man. I got to use the bathroom. I seen your car was out here. <laughs> That's the cap. You got to come with the cap. I got to use the, I got to do the <laughs> Oh, no, you don't come around here. That nigga said a wellness check. Next thing you know, it's a nigga running out the back. <laughs> Booty cheeks like, what's going on? I was the handyman. Why he ran out the window? <laughs> He left his work bell. He fell out the window. He fell. No, all those aside, though, if you want to see how that woman lived, you got to pull up. Unannounced. Because I've been to him. We were young, man, and boys. You'd be like, yeah, man, I went to this chick house, man, and her vagina was stank. I said, that's a horrible woman because she knew you were coming. Oh, God. <laughs> she didn't even get it right and she knew you were coming. That's tough. <laughs> Lord, what's going on here? You know what I'm saying? That's the same thing. If you was going to a lady house and her house wasn't clean and she knew you she was coming, oh she don't care. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? She don't care about nothing. But that's not different when you got a man in the house, because most men ain't going for that. Unless he's sloppy. Then he don't care. You know what I'm saying? But if that man, the man, that man got because you can tell a lot about a man by how he live, like how he keep his room, all that. Type, you, you can tell all that, there, man. You can tell where his thoughts is at. You can tell all that stuff strolled out his mind all over the place. You know, I mean? and I ain't talking about your old lady come pick it up. You ain't gonna have your junk thrown all over the place. Show where how man mind operate. You know what I'm saying? Got an orderly living space. 
Night need living space. That's 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 inside of the high head mind work. You see a nigga, he can't find nothing. Nigga look like you 14 years old. You've been in here playing video games, <laughs> eating snacks. Ain't <laughs> find nothing. That's so you can't find nothing in your brain. <laughs> you you without form and void. You confused. You empty. It's chaos in there, man. There ain't no way to live. Yeah, there ain't no way to live, man. You don't do that. But shoot, let's get on up out of here, man. We'll say hallelujah for y'all who shot the world. I appreciate y'all time this afternoon. Bless y'all the house of Elohim in the name of y'all who shot. You who are willing, man, we pick this up on Wednesday, man. Make it do what it do. And, and until that time, man, I appreciate y'all. Love y'all. You who are willing, man, to the next. Yeah, that's what we do. You come to class. You ask some shit. Let me see your fingernails. Your fingernails dirty. That's what else do.